Hey everyone, Chris here from Agree Disagree, coming at you with the newest Game of Thrones review entitled Book of the Stranger. I know I missed last week's, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I watched it late, way past when it first aired, so I was also very tired. It was a long day at work. But anyway, so first things first, last week's episode I thought it was pretty good. Um, definitely progressed the story a little bit. It was nice to see Jon Snow back in action, um, and we get way more of that this episode. So looking at this episode... I was looking forward to see where they go with the different storylines because we don't we don't know what storylines are really going to include each week. I try to stay away from you know pictures and like reading information. Like I want to go into it fresh and just be surprised with what happens because you never know with a show like this what's going to happen. And so the storylines we get in this one, we get Theon going back to the Iron Islands. You have Sansa getting to Castle Black, uh, meeting up with Jon Snow. You have Tyrion meeting with the, you know, the very rich people that are fu essentially funding the Sons of the Harpy. You have Jorah, and I still forget that other guy's name, um, going to rescue Daenerys from the the uh, Dothraki. And you have a slight bit of Ramsay at um, Winterfell. So I didn't go through the list of the different uh, storylines that we saw. We didn't get any brand this week. Uh, we're definitely getting a big brand one next week based on the coming soon on the next episode at right after the episode ended. Um, but brand is showing to be one of the biggest roles in the Game of Thrones mythology with, you know, going seeing, seeing these flashbacks, um, seeing the Tower of Joy last episode, but the biggest thing with that is that they're just going to, I feel like they're just going to tease it and tease it and tease it and tease it until the very last episode when they finally confirm a big fan theory. If you don't know what fan theory I'm talking about, then you haven't been watching Game of Thrones very long or you've just been living under a rock because <laughs> it's pretty well known fan theory of what goes on Tower of Joy with uh, Ned Stark's sister. I'm not going to go into detail now, uh, but... We're getting a big brand episode next week. It looks like meeting, uh, you know, seeing the Knights King and stuff like that. So in this episode, we do get. I'm gonna go with the smallest one first of Ramsey at uh, <sighs> King's Landing, not not King's Landing. What am I talking? Winterfell. Uh, and you have him talking to I think her name was Osha. I'm not 100 percent sure the wildling that was protecting Rickon, and that was a pretty quick ep part of the episode. Um, but, you know, he, I'm, I'm going spoilers this review, guys, I'm sorry. I usually try to refrain, but I'm going in spoilers this episode, so. It was a good episode, that's what you need to know. <laughs> uh, so, you know, he kills Osha, and that was basically the gist of what we saw there. And then, going from there, uh, I'm going to go to the wall with Jon Snow, because it ties in in the end. But, it was good seeing Jon Snow kind of questioning what he's doing. He's like, I don't want to fight anymore. Like, I'm done fighting. Like, I fought here. I fought there. Like, that's all I've been doing my whole life. I want to... He essentially just wants to live his life at this point. Because considering he's lost his life once. And because he's done all this fighting. And what did it get him? It got him killed by the people that he thought I could trust. And it got had him hanging people that he thought he could trust. Especially Ollie, who was a kid. He hung a kid, essentially. So, it it, it was... Definitely interesting to see Jon Snow's character development in this episode. It was good to see Sansa getting there and the two of them reuniting. That was a very good scene. I like seeing the two of them back together. Um, I was very happy to see them reuniting. They're essentially looking like they're going to be rebuilding the Stark clan in a way. I think Arya's going to be the only one that doesn't, considering where she is. But we didn't get any of her this episode either, so we don't know, you know how her training is going, stuff like that. I'm sure I think we're checking in with her next week. And... They get the letter of, you know, from Winterfell with, you know, oh, you know, I have Rickon. And it's like, well, that's the first time you've heard of Rickon in, in oh, over a season. Yes, we saw him briefly at the end of last week's episode. But, we, you know, this is the first time you hear anyone, other characters really hearing of him. Because we didn't really know what happened with him. Like, him and Osha went off and now, you know, Osha's dead. And he's being held captive by Ramsay. So... What's going to happen there? I'm sure that John and Sansa are going to go and rescue him with the Wildlings because he, he he had that connection with the leader of the Wildlings, saying, you know, how many do you have? And they're definitely going to go fight. That's probably going to be one of the last episodes of the season. Them going back to Winterfell to save Rickon and take back Winterfell for the Starks. So I'm looking forward to that and how that story progresses. 
And we have Tyrion at, um, uh, there's so many ridiculous names, at Marine, uh, with Grey Worm and Missandei and meeting with the, the slavers, essentially. And it was a very interesting part, uh, you know, Tyrion is one of those leaders that knows what he has to do, and he's probably one of my favorite characters in the show, so I'm happy to see him getting a big role this season, but it was interesting to see how he handled it, and how, despite the fact, you know, Grey Worm and Miss Sunday, they don't agree with what he was talking about, because he said, oh, you know, you continue slaving for seven years if you stop funding, funds, uh, stop funding Sons of the Harpy, but, you know, the two of them were slaves their entire lives, and now they're finally free, and like, oh, wait, you're going to keep allowing slavery? Like, they're not okay with that. Uh, you know, Grey Worm even said, I trust Daenerys. Like, I trust her. I don't know you. I don't trust you yet, which is understandable. But then at the same time, he's like, well, she chose me to lead. Like, you know, he was the one that she chose to lead. So if he trusts her, he should trust him. So I'm sure that he will build trust over the course of the season because Tyrion's been doing a great job <laughs> with what he's doing you know he he's taking risks he's meeting with these people that he needs to meet with and try and figure these things out he's a very good leader and I'm really hoping that he's you know he's been a big player throughout the se series so I'm looking forward to see what to do with him later this season and uh, continuing on with the stories that we had in this episode the final one I want to talk about is Sansa not Sansa um da -da -da. Daenerys uh, in the Dothraki city. So you have the Dothraki city, and they're like, oh, you know, you have to go to this temple because that's where all the widows of the, the you know, dead calls goes. Okay, she's there. We see there a little bit more than we did last week. So you have her talking with some of them, and then she goes into their, essentially, a jury deciding where she was going to be. Is she going to stay there and advise, or she was, you know, all these different things. And she flips this, you know, she flips the, the script on them. She just knocks over all the fire, knowing that obviously she's not going to be scathed by it, and just burns down the whole building. And it was very reminiscent of season one, I think the final episode of season one, when her dragons are born and you see her emerge from the flames. That was very reminiscent of that in this episode, but it was on a much larger scale. It was a really cool scene, really cool to see. Um, I love when they give Daenerys great scenes like this because Amelia Clark's a great actress. I love seeing more of her. Uh, you know, her she's great at acting. I'm really she's one of the characters that you're really pulling for in this show. So comment below what you thought of this episode. I really liked it. Um, it was one of the better episodes of the season. I mean, this season has been really great in my opinion. Uh, comment below what you thought of this week's Game of Thrones. And until next time, let's hope we can all just agree to disagree.